welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The past haunts all of us. We all make mistakes. Sometimes accidental, on occasion, deliberate. But let's be honest. What haunts us most is that they might catch up with us. Leading us where? And how far? Let's consider the case of Jim Beecher. So, uh, just where have you been so late? And with which favorite actress, as they like to call them in the newspapers? Don't bug me, Louise. What are you doing? Trying to empty the bottle? Maybe I have a reason. I might catch up with you. Why, uh, you're shaking, Jim. What is it, Jim? What's the matter? I was followed. Somebody followed me all the way home. I've asked you not to walk the streets alone at night. Who was it? What did he look like? I don't know who it was. All I could hear was the footsteps. Just the shadow of a beat behind mine. As though he, she, whoever it was, was trying to fit their feet into my footprints. Every time I stopped, they stopped. And when I turned around, there was nobody there. Nobody. At all. Our mystery drama, The Follower, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Jerry Orbach. No terror is so heart-stopping, so breathtaking, as the terror of the unknown. Facing it is bad enough. But to have it remain constantly behind you is the very essence of fright. To have a something fit its steps into your very own is the quintessence of every bad dream you've ever dreamt. Who Jim Beecher is, what he is, matters little for the moment. All of us share his fear. Except, perhaps, his wife, Louise. What do you mean? Nobody there. Just what I said. For heaven's sake, nobody behind me. Nobody even on the street going my way or the other. Just me, alone. And the sound of those damnable footsteps. If I were you, I'd lay off the drinking. There's where your footsteps came from. And if I were you, I wouldn't bring up the subject of drinking. Well, what else do you leave me to do? You're never home. I live here like a hermit. It's my job. I'm an agent. 24 hours a day, I gotta shepherd a bunch of half-baked egos that are busy making me a millionaire. We don't need the money, Jim. I have plenty. You should know it's the reason you married me. Come on, baby. You know better than that. I could have had my pick. You know that. Yeah, I know. Every piece of cake in the business. But you chose me. Hey, let's not get into that Brannigan again. If you can't get the notion out of your head that I'm constantly cheating on you, would you need us a shrink? After tonight and the way you're acting, I think the shoe's on the other foot. What's that mean? Well, you must have a guilty conscience. About what? You pin it down. I don't know what you're talking about. I am talking about the wee folk. What? The knoblocks, the leprechauns, and the slimy things that go bump in the night. You're drunk again. Why don't you go to bed? And I'm not drunk enough to sleep yet. Why don't you? I don't feel like going to bed. <laughs> I can just bet not. It might just sneak in behind you right under the sheets. What? You know, the follower. Whoever's dogging your footsteps, your invisible shadow. Knock it off. What happened to me tonight was no joke. What happens to me every night is no joke either. So don't ask me to be sorry. I just ask you one thing, Jim. So ask. Go see a psychiatrist. He might be able to clear this up for you. He might be able to clear up a lot of things. <laughs> that sounds more like a threat than a request. Maybe. I love you, Jim. But I'm awful close to the end of my rope. You have so many enemies. I'm one of the few who still isn't. But if I walk out on you, it'll be what's ahead of you that'll be your real problem. Not what you think is following you. Louise? Yes? Can 
I come in? Of course, it isn't locked. It's our bedroom, after all. And I'm always hopeful, even if it has become more and more hopeless. Hey, don't let's start that round again. It's just... Well, I, I'd like to come back to my own bed if I can. Well, you were the one that left it. You know how many late nights my work calls for. I, I didn't want to disturb you when there's plenty of room in the apartment. That's the only reason I moved out. I'd accept any reason as long as you're moving back in. What's the matter, Jim? That private ghost still dogging you? No, it, it's just... Just like... Mm. It's just for once you need someone, and I'm all that's at hand. All right, Jim. It's your own bed, so... Come on, crawl into it. <laughs> I'll try to keep your goblins away. I don't deserve you. You're damn right you don't. But you got me. What is it, Jim? What are you so so scared of? Nothing. What's the matter, Jim? Does she have a large husband with a quick temper and a gun collection? Who? Whoever that you were showing how to become a star overnight in another bed. Damn it, Lou, I told you. I was at a skull session for the Tom Bernard show. It's a mess. It's got to be rebuilt by tomorrow night or we're up the creek All without... right, forget it, Jim. Just lie close to Mama. I'll keep the monkey off your back. Whatever it is. <laughs> Hey, don't give me any of that jive, Bessie. You're on the stuff again. That's why you didn't show. What do you mean, Deke's in the hospital? So, he's got nurses and doctors to take care of him and you to foot the bills. That's why you don't cancel without talking to me first. Sure, I wouldn't have let you. You think you're big enough to call the shots? Okay, 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 save me the sob story. You want to sing blues, sing them on the job. And you show up tonight at the club or I'll bust you right out of show business. She loves that husband of hers, Jim. He pretty near croaked last night. You were pretty rough on her. Ah, uh, the hell with that, Murray. She loused the agency up last night by not showing. I spent enough building up that crazy dame. She should slip me the double O by not showing for a date. Anyway, she's never going to make real big time. And I'm sorry now I signed her long term. So let her go. Not till I make my dough back out of her. And a profit. Then I'll drop her so hard she'll bounce higher than the Statue of Liberty. You know, you're a first-class rat. It's what makes me a success. And you, Murray, don't ever forget it. So, let's see what else is new and ulcer making. Don't go looking for trouble. Everything else is smooth as glass. What about the short fuses? The Astrodome met all our terms. Tickets are being printed already. The demand is sensational. <laughs> Rock stars. Once I dreamed of better things. It's where the money is. What's better? Ah... <sighs> I wanted to find and develop a Helen Hayes, a Carol Channing, a Sarah Bernhardt. Well, that's running the gamut. But why? There's no big money in the theater. You know that. Big money I took care of right at the beginning. I married it. What I really wanted was fame. You got it. Nah, not this kind. I wanted class, Murray. Respect. M maybe even a kind of a place in history. In show business, I mean. Like Saul Hurok, David Belasco. <laughs> Forget it, Jim. You're not the type. A thief you are. A thief you'll stay. Hey, I never stole a cent in my life. <laughs> Not so you could get caught at it. But you wheel, you deal, you cut corners, and you don't give a damn for anyone but yourself. You're an operator. Best in the business. Isn't that enough? I don't let anybody talk to me like that. You already did. I ought to can you right now. The only friend you've got? Who will you have to talk to? Yeah. You'd probably walk right out of the agency and use all you know to cut my throat. <laughs> Needs to. Most of show business is trying to do that already. But you're too slick for him. Nobody. Nothing can stop Jim Beecher. Ah, come on. We should have taken a cab. It's starting to snow. That's ah, nothing. It's just like powder. It's only six blocks. A little air is good for you. What's the matter? You got a crick in your neck or something? Huh? Well, the way you keep moving your head to the side like that. Like you were looking over your shoulder. What's the matter? Murray, 
you sure there's nobody there? Well, just uh, the cop standing on the corner on the next block. There is somebody there. Nah. Can't you hear them? No, no. Keep walking and listen. There. There. Don't you hear the footsteps? Just ours. No, no. I mean the ones behind mine. Just a split second after every step I take. Behind me. Following. You're nuts. Can't you hear them? There's nothing there. Nobody. <laughs> look, look. Come on. I'll <laughs> prove it to you. Look back. You see, there's enough light snow on the ground so you can see our footsteps. Two sets. That's all. Don't you see? That, that's why he, she, whatever it is, is so clever. It puts its feet right on top of mine. Every step I take. Jim, you're talking like a crazy man. Now, come on. I can't. I'm, a, I'm afraid it, it'll start following We're me again. We're only a block from the restaurant. What you need is a drink. Come on, let's go, Jim. You feeling better now? I don't know, Murray. Do you feel like talking about it some more? <laughs> Why not? That's all I think these days. Have you had this thing long? No, it, it started about a week ago. Right after I busted Jane Gould with that suit for a broken contract. The same day you sold the movie deal right out from under Lyle Green. What are you getting at? Nothing, nothing. Just, uh... I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of conscience thing. Hmm? Ah, don't give me that. That ghoul babe had it coming to her. It wasn't my fault. And after all the times Lyle fell on his face because he couldn't stay away from the bottle, why shouldn't I sell him short for once? Sure, sure, sure. That's pressure, that's all. Gets to all of us. Maybe, uh... Maybe you ought to try a shrink. <laughs> the day you find me on a psychiatrist's couch... Ah... Come on, let's get the check and get me out of here. You better take a cab home. Don't worry. Door to door. Hey, waiter. Hey, cabbie, what's the trouble? Lousy, no good mechanics. I told him that battery had a bad cell. You mean your engine's dead? The way it looks, Mac. Well, uh, then get me another cab. This time of night, this neighborhood... What's to worry, Jack? You're only three blocks away from your house. Ain't much of a walk. No, I, I don't want to walk. Not alone. You come with me. Mister, I got enough troubles. I got to get on the phone and get hauled out of here myself. No. No. Just let me get home. Get home. Stay, stay away from me. Leave me alone. What do you want? What do you want? Leave me alone. All right, if you won't. Who are you? Who are you? Jim, what is it? It's, it's following me again. Jim, there's nobody there. You're home. You're safe. There's nothing there, darling. You're doing this to yourself. A man haunted by a ghost who sneaks his footprints into those of the man he follows. Not a very nice man, true. But the experience he is going through is thoroughly unnice also. Can he shake this specter from his heels? Or is he doomed forever to be chased by some malignant fury created out of his past? Or by some supernatural whim? We'll return to Jim Beecher shortly with Act Two. Quote, from the Random House Dictionary. Obsession. The domination of one's feelings or thoughts by a persistent idea, desire... Or image. Certainly that describes Jim Beecher. But why the sudden obsession? It seems quite apparent that he is a heel. Why should conscience suddenly catch up with him? And which of the trail of human beings he has callously left broken and cast aside in his past should suddenly decide to catch up with him? Could it even perhaps 
be his own wife? What? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, stop it. What? What was, what was that? Alarm? What time? Oh, the time doesn't matter. You need rest. Don't wake up, Jim. Uh, I'm awake now. Can't go back. Sleep. Of course you can. Here, uh, darling. I uh, hold you in my arms. Now just relax. Damn it, Louise. Don't treat me like a baby. You're the only one I ever had. Hey, let's not sing that old song again. You and me, we, we just weren't made for kids. You. Speak for yourself, Jim. Okay. So I'm sorry if I cheated you out of something you wanted. But what kind of life could we have made with kids? What kind of life have we made without them? You know what I mean. Ugh. I spend 24 hours a day half the time with all of them. All shapes and sizes. Aging beauty queens, half-baked guitar twangers... And worst of all, the overdeveloped brats you can't control without putting the screws on their parents to hack them into line. It's not much of a life, Jim. Why do you need it? What am I, love? Except what I make other people. It's what I need to live, to breathe. And all you ever needed from me was my money. <laughs> Eight o'clock in the morning. Good time to be honest. All I needed was a start. The rest I could prove, and I have. Of course you have. You've proved yourself. Money doesn't matter anymore. So why not take a rest? Let's just go away together somewhere. I can't. You mean you don't want to, with me? It isn't that, Lou. All my life, I've had this rocket up my tail. Since it isn't going to be me who shakes the world, i got to find that superstar, the, the one who tops the field that nobody can forget. Once I do that, maybe, maybe I can turn off the steam, relax. Oh, Jim, if only you didn't have to prove something. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I, I never really knew I felt that way. I honestly still don't. I mean, all the way. It's this other thing that's happened to me that's got me really shook. Put your arms around me, Lou. <laughs> Why do you even have to ask? If you'd only give me a chance to love you. I need someone to love me. Murray made that clear. I don't have many on my side, if any. On your side for what? To stand between me and what follows me. Whoever, whatever it is. Here, for this moment, I'm safe. But not for long. The minute I get on my feet, the steps will be back on my trail. What am I going to do? See, Dr. Braun... Please. <laughs> that old poop. You should know how he helped me. He conned you. There was a time I was ready to kill myself, Jim. Because I knew you neither loved me or needed me anymore. And if it hadn't been for Dr. Braun, you'd be a free man now, a widower, if you like that term better. You were ready to kill yourself? Without you, Jim, I'm nothing. I just wouldn't want to be. Well, how did he stop you? It's between him and me. Try him. Maybe. <laughs> the way it's going, I have nothing to lose. But what dogs my heels, I don't think any shrink is going to cure. And what I, what I used to hear just when I was alone, Dr. Braun, I now hear with other people along. They do not hear the footsteps. No. That's simple. Doesn't it suggest to you that there are no steps at all, except in the mind. Your mind, Mr. Beecher. They're not imaginary. I hear them. Of course. They're very real to you. They exist. But they are not so important. What do you mean? What is important is, why does someone want to follow you? Not just follow, but exactly in your footsteps. And that's what you're supposed to find out for me. Oh, no, Mr. Beecher. That's what you have to find out for yourself. You're the only one who knows who or what it is. I already told you I don't. That's because it's buried too deep in your subconscious. Or because it's something you're hiding from yourself. And what would I... How could I hide it from myself? Very easily, Mr. Beecher. We all hide things from ourselves. Sometimes knowingly, sometimes without being aware that we're doing it. Why? Fear. Shame. 
Those are the simplest and most common reasons. Who are you afraid of? Nobody. I doubt that. We're all afraid of someone in our lives, or have been at one time. Your father? <laughs> that fool? He was a nothing, a nebbish. I never knew him that well anyways. He died when I was around 12. Your mother? No, certainly not my mother. She wasn't much either. She cleaned office buildings for a living. And she would have been a lush if she could have afforded it. Brothers, sisters, any other relations? Nah, nobody. It was just us. What about your wife? You should know about her better than me. Or maybe she thinks I'm afraid of her. Huh? What Mrs. Beecher thinks, or has told me she thinks, is her business and her business alone. I'm asking you, are you afraid of her? Louise? Why should I be? She's a very rich woman. So? It's possible you might fear losing her. Listen, I don't need Louise anymore. I make plenty of money for myself. But you might have feared her once. Why? Because you did marry her for her money, didn't you? Or maybe it wasn't fear. Perhaps it was shame. <laughs> ah, this is all a waste of time. I don't know why I let Lou talk me into coming here. Of course you do. Because you need help. But not from you. Your hour isn't up. Don't you want to use it? Ah, what's the point? What can you do for me? What can anybody do? I'll have to be frank and say I don't know. But I can say the things I do know. I checked with your medical doctor and your health is fine. No vascular problems. Blood pressure normal for a man of your age. You don't suffer from hypertension. <laughs> which in your business is a minor miracle. Your hearing is perfect. There is no possibility that these footsteps you hear are some physical echo. They are totally, I have to conclude, from one of two fields. What two fields? One, they are supernatural. Ah, come on. Let's cut out that nonsense. What's number two, like I even have to ask? Then don't. Psychiatric. I'm going nuts, right? Yes, no, yes. You want to translate that? Yes, you are right. No, you are not going nuts, or don't have to. And yes, of course, your problem is psychiatric. How do we cure it? We meet, we dig, and somehow, somewhere, we find out who is your mysterious follower. Then what? We hope that he, she, it will leave you alone. Can you guarantee it? No. I think you're ashamed of something, and you won't admit it, ah. even to yourself. Baloney, Doctor. You're talking to the toughest agent in show business. It builds a thick skin. The things I've done don't bother me any. That's the game, and I play it all the way. I will take one piece of advice from you out of this expensive hour, though. I'll cure myself. To hell with whatever it is I think I'm hearing. I'll just shut my ears to it, and it'll go away. Here. Don't bother to send me a bill. Cash on the barrelhead. I'm paying you and going back to where I should have stood. On my own. I'll fight my own battle. Murray, I'm sorry to drag you over here, but I, I was afraid to come to the office in case Jim might see me. That's all right, Louise. If I don't have time for old friends... You are a friend, Murray. Still. Still. I wouldn't think you'd have to ask. Oh, I didn't mean me. I, I meant Jim. Well, I'm a creature of habit, Louise. A kind of human leopard. I don't change. <laughs> You're a kind man. You're the best man I know. Well, I was 20 years ago. You should have been standing next to me if I'd had any sense. But I lost my head over Jim. I know the feeling. He was so handsome, so charming then. I'm sorry, Murray, I walked out on you. So am I. And you never married. I lost more than my head to you, Louise. There's never been anyone else for me. With Jim, almost since the beginning. <laughs> it's always been everyone else but me. But you still love him. I love what he was, what he should have been, might have been. But I keep on hoping he still could be. Ah, old habits die hard. I guess that's why I've stuck with him, too. And lately, I've had a crazy notion that he was... No, I don't know the word. That he's softening up a bit. You noticed that, too. Then, then I wasn't wrong. Oh, damn, Murray... Why did this other awful thing turn up? I mean, what do you suppose it is? Search me. He's done something that went against his conscience, but but what? 
I know how hard and even vicious Jim can be. I, I'm, I'm not making excuses for him, but I... Well, no matter how I feel about him now, I... I just can't sit by and watch a man go mad. I know. I know, Louise. I want to help him, too. I always want to help a friend. In this case, uh, you a lot more than Jim. I was the fool. I shouldn't still be making you pay for it. But I can't turn my back on someone I've lived with 20 years. Only, see, he won't let me help. Will you try? <laughs> if you ask me for the moon in a teacup, I... Uh, if I can reach Jim, I'll try. I'll try to find out what's got him by the throat. I don't hear them. I don't hear anything. I'm walking instead of riding to prove it. These footsteps don't mean anything. They're just in my mind. A kind of echo. Don't don't turn around. Don't turn around. There's nothing there. You've looked before and there's nothing. Nothing. Except I'm just one look. Just one. <gasps> oh, Lord. No. There is something there. It's... Oh, God forgive me. No. 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 So the follower has become more than just the sound and feel of footsteps right on Jim Beecher's heels. It has become something to be seen, at least a shadow. But a shadow of what? Who? And if he is driven far enough, will he destroy it? Can he destroy it? I'll return shortly with Act Three. On a shadowed and deserted street, Jim Beecher has been unable to shut out the sound of whoever or whatever stalks him. And turning has, for the first time, seen his pursuer. Seen? At least been conscious enough of a presence there to break in wild panic and run toward a well-lighted boulevard. Hey, look out, you crazy! Hey, hold on there! Hold on there! No! Oh, Lord, I... No! All right, everybody, stand back. Make room. Give the guy a chance to breathe. Hey, you, get over to that booth there and get an ambulance. Dial 911. What? What? What's, what's going on? Where am I? You're in a hospital, mister. You ran in front of a car. Am I, am I, am I hurt badly? I don't think so. You want me to call anyone? Yeah. Call Mr. Murray Schneider. His number is, uh, let me think. Uh, his number is... Are you sure you're okay, Jim? Yeah, yeah. A couple of bruises and some minor scratches. Hey, just get me out of here before they dump me in the loony ward. Okay, don't worry. I'll take you right home. No. No. Murray, just get me to your place. Huh? Yeah, I've got to talk to you. I know now who's been following me and why. And I need your help... More than I ever needed it in my life. And there's nothing to worry about, Louise. I have him with me, just a few scratches and bruises. Why didn't you bring him home? He said he wanted to talk to me first. And he didn't even want, want to call me. But he says... He says he knows who's been following him, or who he thinks is. He wanted my help. But not mine. Louise, what can I say? Nothing, Murray. I just hope he's come to his senses. It'll make two of us. What does that mean? I want Jim to get well, to, to find himself again, to have no problems, because... Yes, what? Because I finally made up my mind. Jim and me. It's all finished. I just can't take him anymore. I didn't mean to keep you waiting so long, Jim. I told her you were okay and that you were with me. Fine. I... I didn't want her to worry because I was late. Uh, that's a new wrinkle. Never worried you before. You don't have to rub it in. A first-class heel. 
30 years experience. And I don't think I could change now if I wanted to. <laughs> I've cheated, skimmed, taken money under the table, made actors or broke them without any feeling. Except for the rustle of the good long green under my fingers and stashed away in Swiss and Caribbean banks. Maybe it's all catching up with me. And maybe I deserve it. That doctor, he stirred up the old memories. I know who's following me, haunting me, blaming me, and, and wishing me as dead as she is. And at last, I'm facing the fact she has a right to. Jim, look, maybe a drink. No, huh? no. Let me get this off my chest once and for all. It was before I met you, Murray. Nearly 30 years ago. And I was some different kind of guy. Like, I was working for Harmon and Sells, the big agency that went broke. Yeah, yeah, I remember them. Yeah. I was mainly a gopher. But I did some minor casting for the summer circuits. And one day, this little girl named Christy Meadows walked in. And I broke my tail to get her a booking with a stock company as resident ingenue. She was good. I mean, really good. And she was loaded. With talent? No. I mean with dough. Her father was president of an oil company. And money was beans to him. Christy never knew it, but he laid one solid grand on me under the table in 50s to make sure his little old gal got her chance. <laughs> I had a laugh because she didn't need his help, didn't even know he was offering it. But I decided right then and there I could use his help. More than that, his daughter. And I used to go down weekends to the theater where she was playing, and not only for her money and the future I thought it could buy me. There was a lot more to it than that. A lot more... But it didn't take me long to tell her. I declare, from all the stories I ever heard about New York, I didn't expect ever to find an agent that would give me such personal service. Ah, uh, you can knock it off, Christy. You know I'm not down here as an agent. I certainly hope not. I love you, Christy. I thought you'd never say it. Oh, darling, darling, what a life we're going to have. Oh, wow. Such a long, lovely future. Yeah, if your dad sees it that way. I'm not much of a cat. I don't make much money. Oh, who cares about money? We'll make it. Well, her father didn't take to the idea of me as a son-in-law. Christy had a little apartment in New York. And even though I had my own place, we were living together. I don't know how he found out. But one night, poor Christy had to lay the ultimatum on me. Oh, he's just as stubborn as no mule. And he means it. You mean if we wanted to get married, he'd cut you out of his will? He already has. But we're not married yet. No, Jim. But we sure better had going to be. Why? Well, because... Because I just haven't been as careful as maybe I should have been. What? I went to the doctor, Jim. There's just no kind of question. I'm going to have your baby. Look, it isn't too late. We could do something to stop it. Hmm. That's just what my daddy wanted to do. I didn't think to hear it from you. But I haven't any money, Christy. I couldn't even support you, let alone a kid. But we could make out somehow. If you really love me, do you? Well, well of course I do, hon. Christy, we've got to use our heads. We, we can't cut it together with the money I make. Even with you working, too, and, and you won't be able to do that for long. I can't start out that way. What do you mean? start out that way. I got plans, baby. A million plans, but I need some backing to get them going. Jim, are you trying to tell me that that you're not planning on marrying me? Don't you see it? It's different now. I mean, somehow I'll manage so we can get rid of the kids, but... But, but because I, I, I'm not a, a Texas oil heiress, you're going to walk out on me. You've told me your father would never go for me as your husband. But I do... I love you, Jim. Don't you love me? Sure, sure I do, Christy, but we we got to be practical. Practical? Jim Beecher, you're my whole life. And if I can't have you, I don't even want to live. No, oh, don't be a silly child. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you walk out on me, I'm going to kill myself. I swear it. I promise you. Come on, Christy. Let's cut out the corny dramatics. Nobody kills themselves for love. Not at our age, and particularly a girl whose father owns half of Texas. I don't even want a corner of Texas. I want you. I am not going to live without you. Come on. Let's cut out the melodrama. It isn't melodrama. It's just God's honest truth. Damn, this isn't a scene in a play. Will you forget you're an actress and stop the dramatics? Okay, okay. I'll bring you to your senses. Here. What's that? Sleeping pills. 
Enough to make you shuffle off the mortal coil. Just as effective as Juliet's fatal draft. What are you doing with those? Where'd you get... Yeah, the big boss has them in carloads. All the kooks we handle need uppers, downers, you name it. And we hand these out carefully. But just so you wake up and grow up, I'm leaving you enough to make the final exit. No. Jim, don't walk out on me. Look, I'm a working stiff. I'm this evening's gopher for one of our lousier comics who's making his big comeback, ha-ha, at some forgotten joint on the island. I'll be lucky if I get there in time to go for his first double martini of the evening. You can't. You can't leave me like this, Jim. We got to talk. No more talking. We're through, Christy. Best way is to break clean. You'll thank me for it someday. So long. But well, what about these? The pills? Just to open your eyes to life the way it's lived. Don't worry, you'll end up flushing them down the toilet. Or one by one, they'll give you a month of nice, soothing sleep. I'll set you up with a doctor for the abortion and let you know where or when. Of course, I'm cutting it short. It didn't happen that fast or that simply. But I did leave the pills. What did I want, Murray? Was I really trying to help her grow up? Or or was I really praying for her to take them and solve the whole mess for me simply? No way they could be traced. Everything tied up in a neat bundle and thrown out with the garbage. You want me to answer that question? No, it doesn't really matter anymore. She took the pills? Sure. So you as good as murdered that girl? Yeah. No wonder she's come back to haunt you. Well, she won't anymore. She's proved her point. She doesn't need to. Why? Why? Because I finally know what a heel I am. And I'm through. Murray, I'm giving up the agency. I'm, I'm going to try to go back to what I was. Try to make it up to Louise. You're looking at a 10% louse who's looking for 100% religion. I'm sorry, Jim. It's just too late for us. I don't know what your great awakening is exactly. I don't even want to. But I know what mine is. I married the wrong man. As soon as I get a divorce, I'm going to marry the right one. Please, Lou, give me one more chance. Help me, Louise. I want to be what I was. It's too late. I've had all I can take. I just can't find my way back any more than you can. Jim, where are you going? Out. Just to walk. To be alone. This time of night? What about your... the follower... I know now who that was. She won't follow me anymore. Finding out shamed me enough to make me want to find out not what I am, but who I was. How did I throw it all away? Why or what? At least I know enough now, Christy, to say I'm sorry. To tell you how wrong I was. To thank you for not haunting me anymore with my footsteps. Steps. Get back. Why? Christy, what do you want now? Why are you still stalking me? Not Christy, Jim. She loved you too much to hurt or hate you. And who? Stop. And turn around. But there's never anything to. Oh, dear God. It's you. Me, just as I was 25 years ago. Why do you follow me? I didn't, till you asked me to. Yeah, and yeah, now I see it. I needed forgiveness to wash out what I've been, to go back, back to what I was when I was you. Is that what you want? Yes, help me, help me. You need no help. The choice is yours. If you want to be me again, you can make it this moment. I do. I do. Then your wish is granted. Back to the moment when you turned your back on Christy. All right. Uh, 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 uh. That isn't fair. I'm dying. Dying. Of course. You killed yourself when you killed her. Christy, the real Jim Beecher has been dead ever since. 
It must have been a heart attack, Lou. I don't think he ever knew what hit him. I should feel more. But I... I wasted all my love for him. I only hope I have some left for you, Murray. I have enough for both of us. And Jim's at peace. There's no one to follow him anymore. A fascinating story of a complete and absolute heel whose conscience caught up with him. Conscience? Or was it retribution? You can decide that for yourselves. Just as you can decide whether or not the follower ever existed in anything but the echoing labyrinths of the mind. I'll be back shortly. For this night, at least, we can all go to bed less afraid of the shadows that peer across our shoulders, the nameless, shivery things that sometimes haunt our dreams, and at least not fear that stomach-chilling terror of a step that sounds like a follower. We can all be like Satchel Paige and say, don't ever look behind. Something could be following you. And it might catch up. Our cast included Jerry Orbach, Carol Titel, Nat Poland, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Until next time, pleasant dreams.